up guys it's patricia from tarantulaheaven.com i have blinky in this little container right here as well as spidey who is crawling around in the bag i hope she comes to the front of the tank so you guys can see her um, if you are new here i put out videos every single week on tarantula tuesday and these will be videos about tarantula care tarantula tips observations about my own spiders weird things i found out about spiders um, so they could be really anything You guys hear that? That's my cat. The jealous cat is crying once again because I'm filming or doing something related to the spiders and she is not a part of it. Very jealous. This is why we call Ava the jealous cat. Um, she can't come in right now because anytime I do something with the spiders, I kind of keep her either out or just where I can watch her carefully. Um, usually she doesn't do anything with the spiders, but um, when I'm filming, I just kind of sometimes I like to have her right in my view. And now that I'm living in a bigger house, um, I like to kind of do this in a completely different room because I don't like any accidents. So anyway, um, I'm filming from my bedroom because it's warmer for um, the spiders. Oh my God, Eva. We're going to work through this. Anyway, so um, today's topic for Tarantula Tuesday is going to be how to create a tarantula feeding schedule. This is something that I get questions about all the time from new tarantula owners or people who have just got a new spider and they're not really sure how to operate yet. And even if you are really experienced, sometimes we get a new tarantula that is a little bit different from what we've had before or it's a different age, a different size, and we're not really sure how to proceed. So I'm going to give a few different things to think about so that you can think about what kind of feeding schedule you or tarantula might be good with. And there's a lot of different things to consider, a lot of different variables. This could be anything from their size, their age, the species, the time of year that it is. So finding the right schedule is something that actually stresses tarantula owners out a lot. So hopefully some of the things that I'm giving you to think about kind of put it into perspective and kind of help you narrow down a feeding schedule that's going to work for you and your spider. So the first thing to be aware of is the species. And you can always lean on your peers. You can go to arachnoboards, tarantulaforum.com or tarantula groups on Facebook to get tarantula owners feedback on this if they have experience with this spider. The species is going to affect the feeding schedule a lot because some species are really good eaters and some species are not. Knowing that you have a tarantula that has a hearty appetite generally is very helpful to know. And if you have a tarantula who is generally a fast grower, it's also good to know to expect that its feeding schedule is going to transform form as it gets bigger. And for example, my tarantula Spidey right here is a Chilean rose hair, which is very well known for random fasting periods. So this is also something to really be aware of when creating a feeding schedule because that's going to impact and something that you have to factor in whenever creating this feeding schedule. This is something that stressed me out a lot when I first got her, especially in the first few years, because I knew that they fasted, but I really didn't know how extreme this could be. And Spidey is elderly, so this might be even more pronounced than it would be if she was younger. But um, she will fast for months at a time, and the first two years, that I had her, she was fasting for like well over a year and it, it wasn't even connected to any molting period that she was going through or pre-molt. And I stressed so much about this. And now that I've had her for well over six years now, or five years, I kind of just take it as it comes. Um, I know that she has survived for a very long time without food before, and I know that her appetite is kind of touch and go sometimes. So um, I am aware that her species can really go to the extreme, and that has really helped me treat my anxiety and help me be more um, mindful of how her feeding schedule is looking like. So sometimes it's not us that dictates the feeding schedule, sometimes it's them. So when she is refusing food, I will just kind of try every few weeks and I don't put a lot of pressure on it. Whether she eats or does not is up to her and I always just remove the food if she doesn't eat quickly because there's always a chance that she's in pre -malt. So that's how I handle that and that is how you can handle that if you have a tarantula like Spidey. Um, you also have to be aware of seasonal changes. Now, some tarantulas will have a hearty appetite year round and the seasons do not affect them too much, but a lot of tarantulas, their metabolism slows down when it starts to get colder. 
and they will change their appetite regardless of whether you try to regulate their temperature indoors or not. So your summer feeding schedule and your winter feeding schedule might look very different and it certainly does for Spidey. Um, her appetite slows down a lot in the winter as does her activity. So slowed activity is something that you could look into or a sign that you could look at to see if they're going to be as hungry as they normally are. So like us, tarantulas also kind of go into like this hibernation phase in the winter and in the colder temperatures. So if your tarantula is not eating as much as it used to, or it's kind of taking a break from eating, that's pretty normal. And Spidey even, it's not even just her eating that slows down. It is like she slows down too. Um, she becomes incredibly boring during the winter. And even Blinky, who's my Arizona blonde sling, who generally has a very excited appetite regardless and eats a lot more often than Spidey does, they have even decided to go underground for the winter and they have been so much less active on the surface. So tarantulas have all sorts of strange behaviors when the season changes, but so that is something that is going to affect the feeding schedule as well. The size and age of your spider will also really impact things. Spidey is very old. She eats very infrequently. Blinky is a sling and they eat a lot more. Slings generally eat a lot more frequently than adults. An older spider can be fed maybe once a week or even less. Spidey certainly eats less than that. But a smaller spider can eat once or twice per week and just be a little more careful about leaving food in there because they also molt more frequently as well. Slings can even be fed three times a week. Generally, slings can eat as much as they want because they're growing so fast. So it really depends on the metabolism and the growth rate of the tarantula. And size will also play a role in this. A adult goliath bird eater can eat a lot more than a tarantula like Spidey, regardless of age. You also want to take consideration the type of food and the quantity that you're giving your tarantula. What you feed your tarantula is also going to affect their appetite a lot. Different bugs provide different nutrition for your tarantula. And I'll share my experience. So bugs like crickets and cockroaches are filled with protein for your tarantula, and that may help them regulate their appetite a little bit better. Things like superworms or like the worms, they are filled with more fat, and that will definitely have an impact on your tarantula's appetite. And this is something that I struggled with with Spidey. Um, she was on a diet of superworms for a few years because she was a little too slow to catch crickets and quite frankly I got tired of seeing her miss them <laughs> so we switched to superworms because I didn't have a cockroach provider near me so I couldn't really get my hands on any and I didn't really know this but um, I didn't know that the worms were so fatty and I remember posting on tumblr about Spidey's erratic appetite sometimes where she will eat and then just fast for months and or year and it was it was very like that for a long time and then someone another tarantula owner suggested to me that getting her on a less fatty diet might actually help regulate her appetite a little bit better so fortunately um, a few years later El Exotics opened up right near me and this is my local exotic pet store and they sell cockroaches so I decided to see what was going on, see if this was true, try this theory out, and um, wouldn't you know that Spidey's appetite was very regular. She molted about almost a year ago. She molted like <laughs> January 1st of 2019, and since then she has had a very regular appetite, um, accepting these cockroaches every few weeks, and that is probably the longest span of regular eating that she's ever had. So maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's not, but to me it makes sense. And I personally don't think it's a coincidence. Um, she has never been that regular with her appetite. And I think that she just enjoys the cockroaches. And I think that maybe the absence of all that fat um, has helped her metabolism regulate itself a little bit better. So that's something that you could also play with. And so you could certainly do fatty things like worms, um, but a lot of tarantula owners only recommend that you do that every once in a while as a treat. And then other things that tarantula owners sometimes feed their animals, such as pinky mice and things like that, um, that can also mess with their appetite. There's so many other things like calcium that goes along with that. Um, I would suggest steering away from that, especially as a regular thing in their diet, because I do think that that could possibly mess up their appetites, but also provide several other issues. There is still this opinion out there that pinky mice might also cause molting issues so um, I would say with like the basic nutrition just to be safe with like crickets cockroaches things like that nothing too fatty nothing too complicated just 
basic bug feeders. The other thing to consider is how much you want to feed your tarantula. So does your tarantula, when they're being fed, do they get one cricket? Do they get three? Some tarantulas are very greedy and very big, so they can perhaps take down two or three at once. And that's certainly popular and especially with the bigger ones. But for some, for many tarantulas, one is enough. Spidey has never eaten more than one. And she's usually, sometimes she's not even interested in just one. So it really depends on your tarantula, its size, its appetite. Some tarantulas are just very voracious eaters. So it really depends. Generally, you want to make sure that the prey is not bigger than the tarantula's thorax just to make sure that it's safe. And this goes for whether it's a sling or whether it's an adult. Just remember to remove the prey, any prey, if they are not interested in it, because you really do not want to have your tarantula going into a molt and then having this prey attack them while they're vulnerable. And the other thing which will dictate your tarantula's feeding schedule more than anything else is the tarantula itself. So the most important thing that you can do is like watch and learn from your tarantula. Yes, you can do things like research their species, take their size and age into consideration, and provide great nutrition for your tarantula. No, regardless of all these things that you try to do to try to control things, your tarantula is going to be the biggest dictator of the feeding schedule. And every tarantula is different. There are some tarantulas that don't follow the reputations of their species at all. Some tarantulas are going to be weird like Spidey, and they're going to fast a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to feed Spidey and I actually ended up with pet worms or roaches or crickets. This is like a regular occurrence for us. Right now, I currently have an a uh, roach colony that has had babies and they're just multiplying because Spidey just doesn't eat as much as she should. And some tarantulas are very hungry and greedy and they are always ready to accept food. So the best way that you could figure out a tarantula feeding schedule that's going to work is just by observing your tarantula and taking note of their feeding patterns, as well as experimenting. If you're trying to feed your tarantula twice a week, but they're only hungry and taking down prey the first time, then maybe they only need to eat once a week. If your tarantula is acting super greedy and is lunging at prey the first thing and <laughs> is just acting really hungry and always accepting that second or third cricket that you try to give them, maybe they need to eat a little bit more. But either way, you have some room to figure this out and you have some time because tarantulas are incredibly hardy and they'll be okay if you're, eating, if you're feeding them a little bit less than they need for a little period of time. They'll be fine. And another good tip is that you can always make use of tarantula Facebook groups or tarantula forums such as arachnoboards or tarantulaforum.com so that you can get feedback from other tarantula owners who might have your species and the size that your spider is currently at or the growth stage that they're at because they might be able to give you some insight about how their feeding schedule is and what works for them and their spider. And another thing I should address is just the fear of overfeeding. A lot of tarantula owners are afraid of overfeeding and some tarantula owners even make use of power feeding to make their tarantula grow a little bit faster. And so we don't want to have really fat spiders because technically it does make them a little bit more fragile and susceptible to injury if they happen to fall down. But I personally think it's a little bit hard to overfeed a tarantula. This could just be because I've never had experience with a tarantula just eats and eats and eats, you know, spidey right here. Uh, she has almost the opposite problem. So I don't really know what that's like, but I think that your tarantula will kind of tell you and they kind of, if they're not interested in eating, they really won't. Feeding slings, especially feeding them a lot, isn't really so much of an issue. And a lot of tarantula owners actually opt to feed their slings um, more than usual or just as much as they can because they want to get them out of that fragile sling state. That's a dangerous state for a sling to be in. So generally it's okay to feed slings as much as they'll take just because you want them to grow, you want them to get to a more stable state. So that's okay. And you know, the sling will just molt out of it. There's really no danger there. They will just continue to molt and molt and molt. When your tarantula is out of the sling stage and they're more stabilized and they're putting on size, you don't need to feed them in this way anymore. And this is where you might notice that your tarantula is not molting as much as they used to and they're actually just getting fat. <laughs> and if your spider tends to look a little bit more pudgy and they're not in the pre-molt stage and there's really no excuse for them to be like that round, um, you could just experiment with feeding them less and it's easy for them to slim down. However, I do believe that generally tarantulas stop eating once they're full. And the other really good useful thing you can do is just document it. Document when they're eating, how much they're eating, what their behavior was like, when was the last time they molted, are they due for pre-molt. A lot of tarantulas owners, especially the ones that have really big collections, they will religiously document 
their tarantula's habits and the last time they were fed. And that is a really great way to be able to do these experiments and learn and adjust the feeding schedules because you're tracking everything that happened. And it's a really good way to note your tarantula behaviors and patterns so that you can kind of see what's going on and how they're reacting to food. And do they need to eat a little bit more or a little bit less? Or do they tend to slow down in the winter? Um, are they, is this something that happens when they're in pre -mult? So this is just a really good tip in order to keep your um, tarantulas organized and their feeding schedules on track. Anyway, I hope this is really helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any other tips for how you create your tarantula feeding schedule or how you guys do it. I personally don't know what it's like to have a tarantula who is just hungry, hungry, hungry. So you guys might have some more insight about creating a more frequent feeding schedule. But anyway, guys, I hope that was really helpful and gave you guys something to think about. Um, if you would like to learn more about tarantulas, you can always check out my other videos or you can even check out my tarantula guide all those links are below and I really appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end I know it was a kind of long video and um Ava says sorry for crying during parts of the video and I'm gonna give her some attention right now because I've been focusing on filming for the spiders uh for a few hours now and I just want to make sure that she doesn't get too jealous all right guys I'll see you next time bye bye oh my goodness what a cry baby it's okay no one forgot about you. It's okay. You're a star, too. Hmm. Eva. Hey. You got your blankets. Yeah. You got your own space heater in the guest room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm done filming. Let's hang out. I love you. Bye, Evie. Oh, yes. Say hello. Say hello.